okay. Yeah, <laughs> With Split Personality 2, you, you got into flows with it and you really enjoyed writing it. But with certain sections of Mirror's Legion, it's like, oh, I've got this idea for a really interesting story I want to tell, blah, blah, blah. But writing out that story, you d there's no flow. There's no, like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. There's no... There are a couple of funny moments, and that's about its only redeeming feature right now. But I really, really, really want Mirror's Legion to work because the characters are awesome. I really like the characters. Scribe's an awesome character, even though he started off with something completely different. And Mira is pretty cool. I like Mira. She's, you know... But it just feels like a... It, okay, here's the crux of it. It's a story for story's sake, mm. you know? So... There you go. I think that's. I think that. I think that soundbite adequately nails it. It's a story mm -hmm. for story's sake. There is potential there, but I'm not. I'm not feeling it um, right now. I'm doing a well, poor that job. That used to be the case for uh, split personality too, as well, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So maybe you just need to sort of tough out this uh, this process, and uh, and there is a potential that the story will become more relevant later on mm. like, like you don't need to you don't need to push it on right now you already have the characters established you might have also established the the problematics that they will have to face or at least the settings that they will have to tackle and uh, and maybe put it on hold for a while and then and then uh, after a while it will come together for example, maybe maybe in a different story you will sort of run into a setting where you would need a crew to fill in, etc., etc., etc. Also, just just because uh, you thought that you wanted to make it longer than a short story, it doesn't mean that it has to be like overly long. Mm. Yeah, I mean this. Th this would make a, a good backstory, I think. Hmm. Instead of instead of it being like the main focus of the Mirror's Legion story, I think if they've already got the ship and the AI when we encounter them later on, then really it it's just excess how they manage to come about those those Was items. It later on? Oh, this is this is way in the future. We're talking like Alexis oh. Smuggler's oh, okay. Run sort of deal. Oh, um, okay. So they they will sort of their their storyline will converge with the sort of main arc at some point. Yeah. It, well, <laughs> yeah. We're se this is the thing. Yeah, we're seeing how this story goes, and then it's like that. But really, I don't need to see how this story goes. I'm relying too much on this one. Mm. I can just I can just keep going, and Mirror's Legion can just become. The, the, I, basically, the, basically, you need a story for crew building. This is this yeah. is a, this is the team building story. This is the story of how how this team came to be, basically. Mhm. Mm okay. I th the the key word I use in the notes document is dream team when referring to certain members of the team, mm. and that loosely makes my brain equate that to larger arc so dream team being the buggers whom servo will mop up for the big damn heroes mission <laughs> yeah okay because mira and shade the two who have got that additional note they are talented they are they are skilled but they hmm They've got to overcome a few character flaws and a few other problems um, before. Yeah, it's just like Corey. Corey's got to overcome loads of shit before he's ready for any of that. And even and even when he gets to oh shit, what have I done here? <laughs> even when he gets to Murphy Station, and I'm going to close this secret document before I wreck okay. it. Get out of here. Okay. Even when he gets to Murphy Station, Smith proves to him just through conversation that he's not ready for what he's been given, you know, so I, uh, yeah <laughs> so that's my thoughts on this whole thing uh, yeah, I think you're right, I'm going to take a break from Mirror's Legion the, it's interesting that you bring up Split Personality too, because I took about five or six runs at that before mm -hmm. I got the proper thing but the, the 
quote unquote proper thing that actually allowed me to get up to like chapter whatever it is that I was like it, it's, it's done the first draft mm. is done we know what the issues are there's escalations and stuff like that but for the for this the first draft is done I haven't even gone back and edited it in my own thing yet because you know I think we can discuss it together to be honest with you mm. but that story split personality 2 contains elements from all the previous runs so the previous like say I uh, uh, hmm, there were bits in the first two attempts so they're in the bar above a city mm -hmm. split personality 2 now starts with them in a bar but instead of it overlooking a city it's overlooking the sort of works area where the Gathram is getting worked on and Luna in one of the one of the early runs she was sat away from the rest of the group and that was an important thing because she was sort of lost in her own thoughts. She didn't want to get wrapped up in what the crew were getting on with. Like, they're playing a game, they're drinking. She's sort of just sitting and contemplating, quietly contemplating. And then she gets dragged into all that stuff that the crew get involved in. But there are elements from the first five or six runs that, in that got included in the later story. So there were notes that I was hitting on all the early ones. And in some mm -hmm. parts, it felt right. You know, you get to those bits and it's like, yeah, this is pretty strong. But the whole doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that that was my problem with, you know, Split Personality 2. So I think you're right. If I, uh, I'm not going to rewrite the start of Mirror's Legion like five or six times. And to be honest with you, I think it's better if I just treat it as a backstory. Mm -hmm for now but uh, if something you, does what yeah. you can do is uh, once you okay okay hypothetically mm -hmm. allegedly hypothetically <laughs> let's, let's say let's say you have a first draft slash uh, outline-ish thing that you're pretty happy with it still doesn't mean that you have to write it all out you can just pick and choose moments from it uh, for short stories yeah yeah, take a bit of a taking flight approach with it. Yeah, uh, I saved a link. Ooh. If you remember one of the Keystroke Medium guests, Martin, she posted something about uh, about uh, serialized stories, and I think she. I haven't read the whole post yet, but I think she's uh, speaking exactly of. Oh. Uh, I think she's uh, speaking exactly about the sort of um, series of stories in uh, set in one world that sort of link up to a bigger story, but but that function as short stories on their own as well. Yeah, when she says sequential short stories, that will add up. That that, that sort of sums it up. Yeah, I think I'm going to save this and read it. Mm -hmm. Keep that. I'm going to favorite it, but I'm also going to keep it open. Mm -hmm. So it's like a double. You better fucking read this, mate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Once again, you are right, though. I don't focus enough on short stories, and I think I let my imagination run away with me a bit too often. Like, Mirror's Legion, like I said, started off as a short story, and then my imagination was just like, but wait, there's more! Yeah, and but it's, it's okay if there's more, it's just that when processing that material, the more dun, part dun. doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, have to be presented to the reader. Or, alternatively, the there's more, can make up for a next uh, shortish uh, story. Like you mm -hmm. don't have to, you don't have to build a whole book out of every every idea or every crew that comes along. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Second crux, right there. Mm. 
I do like Mira though. She's she's one of the more interesting characters because she she's got more of an inner monologue thing going on, like mm. actively in the scene, like she'll be experiencing discomfort, and then one of her crew will turn to her, almost obviously that he that he can see that she's in discomfort, but she she puts on the brave face, you know. She she's I've got to lead this team, I can't show any weakness, sort of thing. But really, the team. When she has a conversation with Shay later on, he's like, "Yeah, but we can look after ourselves. You don't need to worry about all this and that." So, it's um, she is one of the more interesting characters. So mm-hmm. she 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 deserves a story, I think. I do like Mira. Shade's kind of your generic android kind of deal. Like Shade is just right. So the deal with Mira's Legion is they left a larger mercenary group mm-hmm. Mira was like I'm done with this I'm going to start my own thing and mm-hmm. so she left and took a few people with her and one of the people who decided to go with her was Shade and he's an android and that sort of surprised everybody because you know thought oh well he's supposed to stay with these guys because that's where his loyalty's lay no apparently it turns out not so so he ends up joining Mira's legion and it's the four of them and I do that I've done that thing you know when we were talking about with John about how when I come up with crews it's like oh who do you come up with and then I'm like oh pilot captain medic that sort of thing Mira's Legion's a little different but they've still got their different like classes and roles like Mira's the leader Shade's the sort of combat android Rolo's a sort of retired soldier deal and then you've got Kiki who's the technician and Shade occasionally does like the piloting and stuff like that um so there's still like that thing going on um but I mean Rolo is not a very interesting character he is literally a cut and dry soldier cut out basically like oh I used to fight in an army and now I'm reduced to mercenary work I, I tell you I got an arrow in the knee mm-hmm. yeah it's basically that guy so he's he's no good I don't really like him and I think that's also a problem. Like he's co- he's cool. Like he his language. He's got his own style of talking. Like he's like, okay, boss, that's all good, boss. I can do that for you. But you know, like he's he's very sort of chummy with with Mira, and I and I like that relationship. But it doesn't. The the character's a bit shit, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> With Kiki, though, I had the same thing with Kiki, and Kiki was like, oh, this character's a bit boring. She's like the generic sci-fi tech girl with the visor and all this sort of shit. And then you were like, make them ex-partners. Bang! That character has become a flower that has blossomed into something so beautiful you could not imagine it, my friend. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and, and I need a twist moment like that with Rolo, I think. I need a sort of, what's, what's their deal? Or I need to get rid of Rolo, because he doesn't... I don't really add anything. He's there to help them clear rooms. You know, that's pretty <laughs> much his his thing. They could have hired him. Mm. Yeah, the way I've written him, he seems pretty loyal to Mira. So, I, don't, I, I think this is something I'm going to have to think about. I think I need mm. to chew this over. Mira's yeah, Legion. Yeah, like sort of pose the question, why, why is he here? Mm. Why are you here? What's your deal, man? That's the question you, I've been why asking did you a join lot. This crew? Why why are they keeping you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a question that comes up with Mira and Kiki. Like Mira and Kiki obviously don't really get along in the well for the for the parts of the story that I've written. Like there's obviously stuff going on between them that's sort of unspoken. <laughs> the language they use between each other is sort of like the language me and Becky used to use with one another when yeah, we Yeah, but that's, that's the thing. If you are close with somebody or if you have been close with somebody, then you're also sort of... There are less boundaries. You're also getting, well, more abusive from time to time. And even even if you are able to establish a different relationship later on, if, even if you are able to establish a business or or collaboration later on, some of that, uh, some mm. some of that, uh, bound boundariness, bound boundlessness is still there. So even if you assert each other's roles as, oh, we are adults here, we are working together, yo. 
then there will be moments where where all of that uh, facade comes down and you're like fuck you bitch <laughs> <laughs> you're a cunt yeah. no you are <laughs> Oh yes. Yeah. And, and 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 there will be moments where what about that one time when <laughs> <laughs> Oh you're always like this. Remember that? Remember when we did X thing? Yeah. And uh it will and there will be uh, there will be certain moments of on this sort of unexpected uh Basically, when your mind betrays you, or when your brain betrays you, like you're trying to, you're trying to be the adult, you're trying to behave professionally. But if there is this uh, layer of once, once the boundaries were down, and if there is some bad blood between you, then sometimes your brain will tr will throw you a curveball, and in a situation where there's friction and stress and uh, and pressure and whatnot. You might suddenly find yourself in the mindset of of a bitter ex. Mm. You know that one time when you told me <laughs> that one thing. <laughs> I will I will never forget that. <laughs> so so sort of like old grudges can pop up from nowhere. Mm. There is a moment like, when Key. Uh, go on. Like that thing you gave me. Oh, I know that you hated it. You always hated my gifts. <laughs> sort of, you know, little, big, little sort of personal drama bickering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I I can imagine this quite easily. <laughs> There's also the flip side to that, though. That on some occasion, or on at least one occasion that I've I've written about in the book, Kiki does something quote unquote outstanding, mm. and. Uh, she glances back to Mira with a sort of smug look on her face. Oh. And Mira's actually got this sort of wistful, loving smile Ooh. that she wasn't expecting, you know, so... Suddenly, suddenly, the ex is all shiny and new again. Like. <laughs> yeah, so I like moments like that. That was, once you once you'd said to me the, the ex thing, it was like, oh my god, this, the, yes. <laughs> so... But... It's moments like that I enjoy writing. Oh, the story as a whole. A hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The story as a whole is sort of... Oh, oh, that's the technical term. 